Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Got Cake, and today we're going to be looking at a game called I Am Ball. So before we get started, don't forget to like the video if you enjoy this review and consider subscribing to be notified of future Switch indie game reviews and videos. So I Am Ball is a physics based platform puzzler where you play as a bouncing ball. Now don't let this game's cutesy eShop listing fool you because underneath that fluffy exterior lies pure evil. If you watch the last 18 seconds of the game's trailer on the eShop then you'll get a feel for the game. This game is hard as fuck. It's like the Dark Souls of bouncing ball games. The game begins innocently enough taking you through the tutorial. You jump over a couple of spike pits and get used to the bouncy physics of the ball and it gently lulls you into a false sense of security. You begin to think, oh it's not too bad as you successfully make your way to the Elder Village. Once here you make your way up to the top of the village and you encounter your first real challenge. And it's at this point shit gets real and you're struck with the realisation that everything you thought you knew about the game was wrong. Now I will confess that I've not actually finished the game yet and so far I've explored about 5 areas but I think I'm far enough in that I could provide you enough of a review for you to get a feel of the game and decide whether it's for you or not. The first few lines in the game's eShop description read, I am ball is a challenge and they're not wrong. The game begins with a bit of an intro about a black meteorite hitting earth and corrupting it. Elder Shamans then tried to summon an ancestral spirit to protect the land but it blows up in the face and all that is left is you, a bouncing red ball. Beyond that there's no explanation as to what is happening in the game but along the way you'll meet different characters each providing snippets of dialogue to flesh out the world a little. As you explore you'll follow different paths many of which will currently lead to dead ends but this is where Iron Ball takes on some metroidvania like gameplay elements. You'll eventually work your way through the only currently accessible area and come across your first new ball type, the rubber ball. This ball moves much faster than the standard ball and can bounce much higher, which will enable you to get into the other areas that were previously inaccessible. In these areas you'll then find more obstructions which will require other ball types to pass, and so the cycle continues. Each area provides its own set of challenges and environmental hazards and you'll have to learn how best to utilise the different ball types to overcome them in order to progress. Each ball has three heights that it can bounce to which you'll have to become familiar with and you're able to switch between ball types by tapping the right trigger. There's then a short cooldown before you can change balls again. Balls also have their own abilities. The magnet ball is able to manipulate metal objects, pulling them towards it or pushing them away from it. When activating one of these abilities, the magnet ball also hovers in mid-air. You'll encounter many different challenges, requiring you to utilise these ball abilities to solve puzzles and continue onward to the next section of the game. With Iron Ball, patience and precision are keys to success and are something you're going to have to master if you want to progress. One slight overshoot with the ball can lead to it bouncing all over the shore, you losing control and instant death. Sometimes you really need to take your time and wait for the right moment to move. And other times, you just have to go for it and hope for the best. There are a decent amount of checkpoints in each area, usually situated before and after each challenge section, and these are always a welcome sight. Whichever ball you are currently using will be saved at these checkpoints, and if you die using a different ball, you'll revert back to the saved ball. So to save time, it's sometimes a good idea to switch to the correct ball before saving. In some areas, you'll encounter different coloured locks, to open these, you'll need to go and find the matching key and then return to the lock. If you die whilst carrying the key before reaching a checkpoint, you'll have to go and retrieve the key again. There are also areas in the game which lock you into using a specific ball and remove your ability to switch balls, which is an ingenious way to force you into mastering movement with each ball type. As you play the game, you'll feel many, many moments of pure rage and wonder how it is possible to hate a bouncing ball so much. But as you conquer each challenge the game throws at you, the rage will subside and give way to pure exultation at your triumphs. In my opinion, this is what makes the game great. Yes, it's very challenging, yes, initially some of the sections may feel impossible, but like many other games which punish you for making the slightest mistake, it's this punishment which spurs you on. Every time you furiously watch that ball explode after you screw up your final bounce, you're reminded that you've made it this far and you only have that final hurdle to conquer before you taste sweet victory. Now admittedly this game really isn't going to appeal to a lot of people. Its level of difficulty is likely only something that gluttons for punishment like me will enjoy. But if you're really looking for a serious challenge then Iron Ball may be just what you're looking for. As a rating and from what I've seen so far, I'd give Iron Ball 3 out of 5 stars. 
It's a solid puzzle platformer, and the only thing from keeping it being rated higher is its rage factor and its likelihood of appealing to only a small audience. It also wouldn't surprise me if this game was taken on by masochistic speedrunners and featured at an AGDQ sometime in the near future. You can get the game on the Nintendo eShop for a price of £4.49, and in my opinion it's well worth that price. Now I'm off to go and get angry some more, but if you like this review please give that like button a stab, and while you're at it consider smashing that subscribe button to be notified of future reviews and videos. For now though, thank you all for watching, and until next time, game on.